Welcome to the Plant Spirit Podcast on connecting with plant consciousness and the healing wisdom of nature. I'm your host, Sarah Artemisia, and I'm excited to introduce our next guest to the show today. Melanie Plies is a flower farmer, floral designer, and flower fairy. And she grows flowers in Ashland, Oregon, which is the ancestral homelands of the Tekelma and Shasta peoples. She grows on a land conservancy where she offers you pick flowers and experiences and workshops where people can deepen in relationship with the flowers and the earth. She loves playing and co-creating with the flowers in all facets of life. And being with plant-loving humans in ritual with plants is one of her greatest joys. So Melanie, thank you so much for being here. Just love, love your connection with the flowers. And I'm excited for our conversation today. Yay. Thanks, Sarah. I'm so, so honored to be here today. Yeah. So wonderful as always to chat and connect with you. And truly in my experience, you are a living embodiment of the flower realm in human form. And so I'd love to hear in what ways do you love to collaborate with the flowers? Oh, there's many ways. I, you know, from the ground up, I love to grow them and the designing and where they're placed. And that feels like this fun collaboration. Over time, the more I work with flowers, I (laughs) realize that it's not my idea, it's their idea. And this interesting, like, yeah, collaboration that happens between both of us. It's mysterious. So it, it's them and it's me. And so, yeah, the design of the garden. Um, I love, just love to like make arrangements with the intention of, you know, the needs or the desires of of where the flowers are going and whom they're for and see what happens there, you know, different color tones and different flowers will show themselves zinnias for example they're just like super happy and uh, laugh lightness and that kind of cheer I mean all flowers are cheer and joy but there's something about the zinnias that are someone really needs a brightening that way and some more lightheartedness so they'll sneak themselves in bouquets in that way or glizianthus is very like soft like a rose kind of petaled layers and very light and cloud-like for something kind of softer if someone's needing that. So yeah, the arranging, what else there's, yeah, I've really been enjoying um, experimenting with plant form and movement through my body and that plant and flower embodiment. And that has been interesting just this last year, I've been doing a lot more of that and I'll feel the movement is like a complete healing, like what I needed sometimes. And then other times it's a movement that's like, whoa, I don't, I can't describe in words what this is, but I'm like, this is an interesting download of this flower. So that felt really, really interesting and like really important to be bringing that and to be sharing that with others, to be doing it myself as a practice and then sharing for others to connect deeper to the flowers. It's like they have a a new way, you know, you can be around them in the garden and that's an amazing way to connect through our bodies and the movement that comes. It's like another layer or level they can connect with. So excited about more flower performances, truly like the performance of the flower through our bodies. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? What do you feel and experience when you're doing a, a plant dance, a plant movement? Yeah, well, I mean, they, it completely varies moment to moment, even plant to plant. Sometimes, for example, sunflowers, I love sunflowers so much. So that will often feel like what the sunflowers are like an upward vertical movement and maybe like arms to the sky. And it feels like it's both. And I'm often, I feel like I'm honoring them and through that movement in my body. And they are 
blessing me at the same time through the movement that comes through. And then there's information like, oh, that felt a certain way. And I'll feel different things. It might feel more joy or or something I can't put into words, but like, wow, there's something there, some depth, some wisdom for sure that is coming through. So yeah, each time different, which is so amazing. Each flower completely different. Yeah. That is so amazing. And I love how vast and diverse the flower realm really is. And in my experience, they offer such a high vibrational experience of healing and joy that can sometimes be challenging to connect with in the human realm and in the realm of just what's going on planetarily right now, that the flowers really offer this direct connection to an experience of bliss and joy. And I would love to hear a bit about your experience with growing the flowers specifically and how in your experience does growing flowers allow you to tap into that magical quality or that joyful, blissful, high vibrational quality that the flowers really offer? Oh, yes. So, you know, growing them, of course, like the magic of seed sprouting and growing, that's just pure, pure magic. And then I really love to watch the flower in all of its stages at, from a bud to open and well, there's different things that happen for me, but feeling the stages, like when it's young and there's this fragrance and of course looks different, that's, and there's a fragrance that will keep shifting over time as it opens and opens. And that can be just such a sweet reminder of all the stages of my life. And they're all beautiful, even if they're awkward and young (laughs) and immature, for example, but there's something beautiful. Like when the sunflower comes up again, like it's young smell, it's like more green and still beautiful, but yeah. And then being, I mean, being with the flowers when they're in full bloom, there's just this, there's this feeling of joy for sure. And lightness and like, ah, everything's lifted. Like your burdens are lifted up. And I feel yeah, a smile just comes across my face. I mean, so many times for me, and I've watched it with so many people like at you pick or when I'm after they come back, like the way they come into the farm. And then after they have the arrangement of flowers or after I'm have stepped in the garden, like my mood is completely altered. And it's not just your mood. It's like, yeah, you're complete. My state of being has moved up to where they are into a higher vibration. It's really, really amazing. So you know, and watching them like in the elements dance with the wind or just the way they receive the light and of the sun. And if they're being kissed by the rain, there's just like this, it's such a exquisite beauty and yeah. And joy that just, yeah, lifts the spirits for sure. I feel so grateful to be working with the living plants the living flowers for sure. Yeah. Such a blessing. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's certainly been a blessing in my life that you're working with them. (laughs) So, Yeah. Thank you for that. For, for just really honoring the call of the flowers. You're so connected with them. And I know that one, one plant, one flower in particular that you're very deeply connected with is Tulsi. And so I would love to hear Mm -hmm. what really is your experience of really who is Tulsi and how do you experience Tulsi's healing wisdom? Yeah, Tulsi, holy basil, sacred basil, such a beautiful plant and flower, little purple flowers in the mint family. So these gorgeous little teeny, beautiful purple flowers. Yeah, Tulsi, I feel this, she is, she feels like a she (laughs) in that she feels like this, the divine mother, a mother that holds all deeply nurturing, abundant, generous, give her like, I feel her. I mean, when I drink the tea, like daily, that's how I love grow her and be around her. But drinking the tea is my favorite way to take her in. And I just feel such deep nourishment. And there's this calm 
and uplifting and alert that I feel, which is, it's, there's no other plant that I've worked with that has such a unique quality like that of both relaxing and uplifting. She's like a nervine, so helps the nervous system. And, and I feel that both the nourishment and the, the deep relaxation. Also lately, I felt a lot more into her, the protection element feeling like I'll, you know, when I sit and just talk to her, there's like this regal queen, queen for sure, but super badass and, you know, will, yeah, protect. So I've been calling her in and protection and feeling that it just, just recently after all these years of being connected with her, feeling into that protection. So really she's a lot, everything lately, all the goodness and just, you know, her medicine is so sweet. She tastes, you can just have her without honey in the tea. And a lot of people who are not into quote, different flavors will be, she's like a great medicine to have first time because she's so delicious. And I feel like that shows a lot of who she is just that really approachable, like here, I'm going to offer you love, love, deeply, deeply loving. So Yeah, she's been a plant that um, ever since I started growing, I was first a vegetable farmer and um, but grew Tulsi and I was like the one plant that I always wanted to give starts to everyone. I had no clue why I just was like, here, grow her, grow her. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. She's very generous, giving, giving and feel like she's just brought so much, so much support to my life, feeling held, feeling nourished, feeling helping the frayed nerves. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Amazing. Oh yeah. This summer I do um, meditations with Tulsi, Tulsi time communion on the farm and then in the winter as well. And for the last one in the series, we did a Tulsi crown making it. I thought, what are we going to do the last time? And I was like, a Tulsi crown, how have I never made one? And it was such a beautiful, both again, it's this like, it felt like an honoring of her for sure. And then honoring of us and our relationship to the earth and us as daughters and sons of this most beloved earth and of Tulsi specifically. So, yeah. I love your connection with Tulsi and you just brought up the flower crown. So of course I have to ask you more about that. So (laughs) you talked about the plant dances, clearly you're connected with the essences, making flowers, the flower crowns in particular though, I would love to hear more about that. What is your experience with making flower crowns and what is so special about this modality as a way for connecting with Hmm. plants, flowers, and really the joy of life and being alive? Yes. Yeah. Flower crowns, they are just so fun to make. They are that celebratory energy, wearing a crown and, and making a crown. You're, again, there's, regal the joy i mean putting flowers on your head a bunch of them there's just nothing like that feeling of putting that fresh flower crown on it's like wow (laughs) electric and i'd love to gather people you know at the holy days in the wheel of the year and to make crowns and yeah again it feels that honoring and the celebration of the earth and the seasons and and each flower that we're working with, um, you can bring in the your intention and choosing which flowers align with that. I love to bring that in. And yeah, they just, it feels so intimate in a beautiful way. Like when I'm wearing flowers, there's just this, that lovely, I mean, you have that sensual connection, like feeling them in your hair, or if I wear them on my body and it's, so delightful. And I highly recommend (laughs) putting them on whenever you can tucking one behind your ear. There's just this like super sweet close connection that again, you're just like connected with the light and the joy and the beauty and the love, the pure love that flowers, flowers are really truly are just expressions, pure love. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they absolutely are. I love that about them. And yeah, how they bring, they totally bring in that love and joy vibration. And it's so fun to play with them in all the many facets. And they also help with this 
experience of deep healing as well. And so tell me, how has being in relationship with plants really supported your healing journey? Yeah, the plants have been so, so deeply supportive in my journey of healing and continue to be. I feel that they are this container of safety. The flowers specifically, that the beauty that they are, looking at a flower and just feeling this sigh of like, wow, like life is magic. Look at the life running through that being. It is purely love. It's pure love, pure magic, pure joy and beauty. And the word sacred beauty, that's what comes to mind. There's like this sacred beauty that I feel, feel in them beyond the visual. It's like a depth and it really allows for me to soften and let go in whatever realm of my life I have noticed you know, music has the same effect for sure for me, like beautiful music. There's like a container for, you're you're held by something so beautiful that we can let go of whatever I'm holding, which being a human, that's, I feel like that's a journey of healing. It's, it's a letting go. And so just so grateful for their presence in my life um, in that way. And I just, you know, bringing intention and ritual with, you know, if it's drinking teas or as I'm going to harvest or plant and and all of what I'm doing with the the plants, I've found that when I have that intention to heal and connect and go deeper with them, if, if the intention, since we're talking about healing is healing, it really it works. It's like, I feel so held because I feel their presence and their support and receiving their wisdom, however it comes. Um, If it's just the feeling in the body or the ways they magically show up and do cool things to help. Yeah. To help my life and yeah, help my heart's desires to to flourish and unfold. It's reminding me of a of a story I'd love to share. Just recently, over the Halloween, Samhain, I've seen visions for several years of you know people, especially women, just wearing flowers all over their body, kind of belts and draping garlands of greenery and flowers. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a belt on finally and spend a moment to do this. So it was curly willow and put flowers all in and had kind of a belt. And when I saw like, what am I supposed to wear? It was like a long, actually like tropical kind of long white skirt and then halter top. So, and after I put the belt on, I'm like, huh, this is looking kind of tropical. Interesting. And then I could not get the crown for my head to stay on my head. It kept slipping and slipping and it kind of slipped once to become a necklace. It just fell and it became a necklace. I'm like, oh my God, it's supposed to be a lay, the a flower lay of the tropics. So I tied it there and I looked at myself and I was like, oh my goodness, the flowers <laughs> just totally created my outfit that is a tropical flower maiden fairy, whoever, flower laden woman. And I was just so touched because I've been really wanting to go to the tropics to be with the fresh flowers and the warmth this winter. And that way hasn't found itself yet, but it became this, this night of, wow, there's, I'm going to hold that intention and prayer because it could happen. There is a way. And I had this deep knowing that the flowers were saying, Hey, no, we can do this. The flowers on my body from our gardens here in Oregon were connecting to the flowers over there in the tropics. I just had this deep knowing. So that was super cool and fun and magical. Like they created the outfit that was, <laughs> yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Just learning to, you know, trust that process of things that come in my vision and in my heart's desires. It's yeah, it's me and it's can be it's the flowers because I work so closely with them and and they're fully supporting fully supporting me and guiding me <laughs> and guiding my work in my daily life. 
So yeah, that bringing it back to healing, I just, I feel so held. Like I'm, I'm the deeper I connect with the plants and the flowers. I'm like, Oh, I am part of this web of life. And as I have learned to quiet the mind and connect with the subtle communication, which isn't even always subtle, (laughs) it can be, but I've learned to, um, it's like I'm I'm held, I'm part of this web of life. And that is so deeply healing. And it just feeling that I belong, that I belong here, belong on earth, belong with all. It's not just humans. And when I was younger, I thought it was just just humans. But now it's like, well, we're alive, I'm supported. There's a dance, we're interacting. I can connect, tune in, bring my spirit to them, and and that affects them. They light up too. So yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. There is so much in what you just shared there. I love that they guided your, <laughs> your, your costume there. And just, and, and also that there was this messaging coming through that, that you were tuning into incredible, incredible. And, and just the guidance that they provide is so incredible. And that sense of belonging that you brought up, that sense of deep belonging that we belong here we belong here and it can be i think particularly for folks who are sensitive or you know have huge hearts that sometimes living in this world can feel heartbreaking and when we connect with nature with with the frequency of the flowers with the vibration of the plants tuning in in a myriad of ways which you've just shared so many today in my experience, that really helps us remember that we belong, that we are a part of this web of life that is connected, that has always been connected. We have always been connected with this web of life. And it helps us remember that and just how precious that is, how precious that is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier was before before this conversation was about the the cycles, the cycles of life and how really being in tune with these cycles and connected with these cycles is a part of this experience of belonging. And you mentioned here today, this aspect of, of letting go, how there is healing in letting go, how that is a healing process in and of itself. And just recognizing that here in the Northern hemispheres, we're shifting more into the winter months and you are so deeply connected with the flowers. How do you connect with the flowers in the winter months in these quieter times? Oh, yeah, it's a great question. There is nothing like being with fresh flowers, living plants. However, I really love to to make, you know, wreaths. I dry flowers and making wreaths or whatever other, you know, wall decorations, whatever creative inspiration comes. So yeah, the dried flowers also have the energy of the flower. It's different, but it's there. So it's it's so sweet. I also love to lead workshops. And, you know, we have time to sit with those plants. And it's like you're remembering the season, being with them. I feel like I'm like, oh, yeah, I can remember them fresh out there. I can feel them. And weaving and making art again, it's that celebration of who they are and our creativity that flows with them. So yeah, making art. I never, ever felt like I was an artist, would never have called myself that until the plants. I'm like, I'm a plant artist. And at my workshops, everyone's are amazing. It's like, you can't go wrong (laughs) with the flowers and the plants. And I just love to see, yeah, what beauty comes through. So yeah, making making art and of course teas and herbal medicines. And I really, really love to work with flower essences, especially in the winter. The essences that are, you know, the energy of the plant in water. And it's like, wow, there we can take in the, the body of who they are when they're not living it, um, in the winter time. And that is really, really a beautiful way to connect. I I love, you've taught me this, Sarah, to do the body scan before I take an essence and feel how I'm doing, feel my sensations, my emotions, and then to feel after. And often you're like, wow, feels different. (laughs) So yeah, working with flower essences in the winter for sure is another beautiful way. I also love to make like little 
hair combs and hair pins. So having dried flowers on your hair, super sweet um, and crowns, dried flower crowns. And then moving more into evergreens and plants, like in December, going out and foraging fresh evergreens that stay green all winter. That tradition of making wreaths comes from, you know, the, like having a symbol of eternity and life is it's going to come back. It's green. So yeah, I love to have make evergreen reeds and then adding dried flowers is fun into that. And so, yeah. And even going out when, you know, going to the garden, if I don't end up getting to taking it all down by December, or January, going out there and seeing how the plants have died back and watching their stages of maybe they're still in seed or have died back or, you know, digging in, feeling their roots, digging bulbs and moving like dahlia bulbs around or daffodils. So connecting with them when they're in their root stage, that's also a beautiful way through the garden being within all the seasons. So those are some ways. Yeah. I can yeah, stay the power, mm-hmm. the power of really connecting with plants in the root stage. <laughs> Super yep. powerful. Yeah. You know, one thing that's coming up right now is you're as you have shared about both the wreaths and the crowns is this, this interesting aspect of the circle. And you mentioned it really being connected with eternity, with life. I'm curious Mm. if there's anything else that's really coming to you about that, about the power of the circle, because as you're talking about this, it really stands out to me that there is something about this eternal power of the circle that we have been connected with Mm -hmm. since ancient times and how, how in your experience does really working with flower crowns reads this sort of a thing really uh, support with connecting with that? Hmm. Interesting. I, I mean, what came to mind when you were talking is the Dahlia circle, the fresh flower in the garden, creating a circle where you can go into amidst the kind of road, uh, you know, farm style and just how I always want to have circles at the farm when possible. And they feel like a continuation, right? They're like, they don't start or stop, no beginning or end. So, right, wearing them. I have never thought about this. <laughs> the circle is wearing crowns that are, of course, circles. If you have that connection to maybe, you know, how we our eternal nature and and the nature of all the the infinity perhaps something around that i don't know i'm i'm, I'm going to think on this one more but yeah i mean making wreaths i will also do like crescent moon like a moon shaped and stop halfway and i i love the kind of asymmetry as well but that's just a different thing but there's nothing like a full wreath it just has some kind of, yeah, when I see it, it's like, ah, uh, it's like you can rest. So there's something there. I'm curious. <laughs> I know I am too. It's just as we're talking that it was lighting up as you were saying it. So yeah. I'm seeing too, like, right. If you have a flower crown, the circle on your head, if it wasn't a full circle, it wouldn't allow for this kind of lifting up, like the energy lifting and connecting to the cosmos. I don't know. I'm seeing something there, if that makes sense. There's a, a coherence, coherency in the circle. So amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> so curious. And how would you say really that the plants support you in your life's work? Oh, well, <laughs> they, they are my life. <laughs> I am happily have happily given my life to them. Um, yeah, I mean, really I've been working with plants for, for some time now and they bring uh, so much joy, so much beauty, wisdom. They're my teachers. They, they teach me about being a good person, (laughs) being a whole person. They've, yeah, really supported me in all ways. They've connected me to amazing people like yourself. They've just brought this grace. I feel like I've 
received a lot of grace in how I just moved through the how I moved through the world from being around them for sure. And brought a lot more love into my work and my life in my heart. So yeah. We're one. I'm I'm feel so blessed, so blessed to be in, in relationship with them every day. Yeah. And we all are, right? We eat plants three times a day, something like that. So that alone. <laughs> we're like Yeah, between eating and breathing, we've got the plant realm pretty exactly. covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So amazing. Well, yeah, I, you are so connected with the plant realm, the flowers in particular, and I just love your sweet connection with them. And so tell us, how can people find out more about you and your work? Yeah, um, you can go to my website, uh, waterleaffarm.com, also on social media, Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, find out ways you can connect with me. would love to hear from you. And send out a message around anything. Would love to talk plants or share my offerings. So yeah. And I have an email listserv. So you can get on that through the website as well. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for joining us today. Just such a joy as always to connect with you, period. And about the flowers, just so amazing. So thank you for being here. Oh, thanks so much, Sarah. Yeah, thank you so much. It was fun to to connect with about the plants more here and the flowers. Thank you so much for what you do. Well, thank you. And thanks so much for listening and joining us today on the plant spirit podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and please follow to subscribe, leave a review and look forward to seeing you on the next episode. (laughs) 